these three phases of Kelvin cycle, you have two ways to look at it. If you want to look at it in the form of chemical reactions, what chemical components reacting with what? You go with the, with the left one, okay? The carboxylation phase, reduction phase, and then regeneration phase. So you can see the complexity of it, of this molecule. The good thing is you can already see, oh, this, this is the stage that uses ATP and NDPH, and then this thing is actually, they kind of split before they made it up at the end, right? So you get the appreciation of it. Another way to look at it is just look at the summary. This when you are interested with the reactors, the products, and also the enzymes responsible for it. The reason we need to have this, not only this, even though biochemistry student kind of, you know, very, very, very fond of this diagram. The reason we are dealing this is because well, you learn physiology. When you learn physiology, you understand that in any biochemical reaction, there is always a limiting factor. You need to ID the limiting factor so that you understand how the plants speed up the reaction or slow down the reaction. Because at the end of the day, it is the very process that is manufacturing your harvest. Right. Right. So look at this. The number one, the one that, that, that I um, highlighted here, is actually belonging to the carboxylation phase. So what is the reaction here? RUBP plus CO2 plus water. Now you learn something new. Maybe before this you have learned Kelvin cycle, but you didn't know Kelvin cycle need water as well. Yes. Kelvin cycle, just like the light reaction, requires water to run. In the light reaction at the thylakoid membrane, the photolysis, you use the water, split the water, so that you get what out of the water? Electron. Yeah, you get the electron. So in this process, you also need water, but not so really for the electron transport. You need the water because to hydrate the molecule. Right? Oh, sorry. Right. So the product of this is you get two molecules of phosphoglycerate. Actually, it was originally one molecule, but this molecule, uh, scientists omit this because it's very unstable. Scientists go straight to three carbon phosphoglycerate. How come? Why two? RUBP, five carbon. CO2, one carbon. You bring together, you will get six carbon molecule. This six carbon molecule, super, super unstable, maybe like less than a second, it will quickly broken down. It breaks down, it becomes three phosphoglycerate, two molecules of it, right? So what actually happens here in this first phase of Kelvin cycle will greatly determine the activation of the Kelvin cycle will determine whether the Kelvin cycle starts or not, will determine the rest of the steps here. You see, there's so many steps in here. 12. Actually, there's more if I use other book. Then you'll be cry you will cry even harder. Right. <laughs> right. So let's look at what happens actually a bit detail in number one. In here in number one here so in number one here this this is what happens to the RUBP the five carbon sugar and also the Rubisco so this RUBP it will go some kind of chemical transformation to itself right isomerization and condensation because this RUBP, depending on Rubisco, the enzyme that acts upon it, will either bind to oxygen or CO2. And that is the problem with Rubisco. 
that's not the you cannot blame RUBP, okay? Blame Rubisco. R Rubisco. So the problem with Rubisco is it has carboxylase reaction and also it has oxygenase reaction. If the Rubisco take CO2 and then fuse with RUBP, you go up here. You will get the, the one that you saw earlier, the 3 phosphoglycerate. And then this will proceed to photosynthesis, two molecules of it. However, if this Rubisco decides to do the oxygenase, it gets the oxygen, the liquid oxygen, fused with RUBP, then you go down here. It will produce two molecules as well, but only one is phosphoglycerate. The other one is phosphoglycolate. Yeah, these two phosphoglycolate has got this uh, synonym, the, we call it the C2 photosynthesis. All this why you learn about the C3, C4 and can photosynthesis, right? This, that's another one, C2 photosynthesis. Who is the C2 photosynthesis? This thing, photorespiration. So photorespiration is actually the C2 photosynthesis. Is it really photosynthesis? No, it's actually carbon salvage pathway, right? So what, what seems to be the issue here? If it proceeds with this, you get your sugar. But if it proceeds with this, you only get half of the sugar precursor. Not, not only that, the moment phosphoglycolate, ah, plus another one, glycolate, glycolate. The moment this thing is um, manufactured, it's actually a bit toxic. The plants need to deal with it. When the plants need to deal with it, not only that it will use energy, it will cause other organelles to intervene as well. Okay, This glycolate needs to be detoxified. To detox glycolate, you need three organelles. You need the chloroplast, you need the peroxisomes, you need the mitochondria. We will learn, uh, I think next week, about this photorespiration in detail. But for now, it's good to know this thing can happen. When does this thing happen? When CO2 concentration surrounding Rubisco decreases. When it, it decreases, when the temperature is high, when, when it gets too acidic, when, when else? This, this is why plants are not doing well in the, in the field when it's too acidic. This is another one reason. Usually you learn because of the nutrient avail availability, right? When it's too acidic, some nutrient is not well. Well, that is one thing. That's another thing. You create acidic environment in the chloroplast as well. When it's too acidic, CO2 cannot attach to Rubisco properly because it's competing. That's the key word. CO2 competing with oxygen for the catalytic site of Rubisco. As simple as that. 